Hi guys, Dave Wilson here again and today I'm going to show you how to make a full Persian 6-in-1 cross. Now if you haven't already seen it, do check out my video on the Persian 6-in-1 bracelet because it's the same technique so that will really help you out. But I must say it's taken me two weeks to make this video. Making this cross is actually quite simple, it's surprisingly, it's not as difficult as it looks but trying to do it on camera under a macro lens without moving anything and try and get the right shots and then dismantling it and showing it again from a different angle it's taken two weeks a two page script and an awful lot of experiments in order to get all the shots i need to explain this fully so i hope you appreciate the work that's gone into it and i hope you have a go and you manage to make it because it really is a beautiful thing and it's worth having a go so, grab your jump rings, follow me. Let's make a Persian cross. This beautiful cross is made from four small sections of full Persian 6-in-1 chain. You can see they're pushed outwards by these two large centre rings, but held back in place by four jump rings around it. It is a bit fiddly, but there's only a couple of basic moves, and I'm going to show you a few tricks and cheats too along the way. So let's get started. To make it easier for you to follow, I'm using two different colours here, silver and copper, but the rings are all the same. You're going to need 53 jump rings, so here I've got 26 silver and 27 copper. I'm using 1.2mm wire on a 6mm mandrel, so this gives me an aspect ratio of 5, and it is vital that you stick to this ratio. You also need two larger rings. These are also 1.2mm wire, but these are on a 10.5mm inside diameter, with an aspect ratio of 8.75. Now, just to show you why, if you put four small jump rings together, then the larger rings need to pass through the centre point of each one of those four rings, so that's the size that the larger rings need to be. Before we begin, we can speed things up by closing 16 rings, in this case the silver ones. The rest can all be opened. And note how my rings are opened, holding in the right hand and bending the left side down towards me like that. This is important as this will help you later. To simplify the explanation, we're going to start by making all the four sections exactly the same. Later on, I'll show you how to extend the leg section and add the extra link to the top for the bail. So we're going to start by making four sections of 2-3-2 two, chain, like this. To do this, we need 16 closed links, the silver ones here, and 12 open links, the copper ones here. Start by taking an open ring, copper, and adding four closed, in my case silver ones, and close it. Add a second open ring through the same four, close it, and then add a third. So we've got this four in three, or if we open it up, two, three, two. So repeat this with the other jump rings to make four little sections. You should now have four little sections of two, three, two chain. Now we need to make these into little sections of full Persian. So firstly, grab one of your two, three, two chains and wrap some thin wire through the two end links. This is just a twist tie. Next, we're going to rotate the other end links back, one up and one down like this, and try to hold them. Next is what I call the flip move. Get one of those open links, copper one in my case, and note how I'm holding it. And we're going to put it through the end two links like this, and then flip it over and thread it under the two preceding ones, and close it. And I've painted it red here just so you can see exactly where it is. So I'll show you the side view. Flip it round, you can see it on the top there. So you can see how it tucks under those previous two links there. Hopefully that makes sense. The same again on the opposite side. Thread it through, flip it over, and thread through the two previous links and close. 
in this case I've highlighted it green so you can see it at the top though that's the second ring flip it round you can see the first red one underneath so hopefully you can see where those two rings go thread it through the end and flip back hopefully that makes sense now you can see it so I'll give it a quick polish and then we'll carry on this is what it should look like a small section of full Persian with three links on the end so repeat this flip move on the other three sections of chain, all exactly the same. We now have four sections of full Persian, albeit little short ones. But that's the head and the arms done. We now need to extend the leg section a little more. So grab one of the sections, of course they're all the same, and we need another 12 rings. In my case, six copper and six silver, all opened. To make full Persian only requires two moves. The first is to add two links to the end. So hold it with the three links to your left and make sure you can see the links pointing towards the left like this. We're going to put two more links through the centre here. So one and close. So hopefully you can see where that goes at the end there in between the other silver ones. So we're going to add another one now, and two, and close. And you can see how they follow the others, kind of pointing to the left. The next is the flip move, just as before. So again, taking an open jump ring, threading it through the end two links, flip it over, and thread it under the two preceding links, and carefully close. And I've highlighted it red here, just so you can see exactly where that ring is. Same as before, flipping back and going through the previous two links. So hopefully you can see that though, exactly where that goes. Same on the opposite side. Thread through the end two links, flip over, thread it through and close. And you can see I've highlighted the second one again there, so you can see exactly where it is. And notice with the three links on the left, the copper ones kind of point towards the right and the silver rings kind of point towards the left they kind of taper in hopefully you can see that so we're just going to repeat this pattern now for another two sections so all we do now is to continue those two moves until we get the length that we want so twice more add two links through the middle through the end flip and thread through same underneath, through the end, flip and thread through. You'll note we now have four sections. So just once more, add two links through the middle. Through the end, flip and thread through. Same underneath, through the end, flip and thread through. Um, we've now got five links on each side. So that's legs done. We can now turn these four sections into a cross. So open one of the large rings and thread it through the top of the leg section. Note carefully how it goes through these two links but on top of the end link here. Continue to thread the other sections on. It doesn't matter what order they are because they're all the same. Just make sure that the three end links are all in the same direction facing you. Once they're all on, close the big ring very carefully. Check that everything looks identical. Eight rings go in through and all four central rings should be underneath the large one. Any problems, undo the large ring and thread them on again. If you're happy, then turn it over and we're going to add the other large ring onto the back. It's a little trickier this time, but rotate the ring and kind of corkscrew it into your links one at a time. The last one is always awkward, but it will go, so just keep turning. Close the ring carefully and again check that it's all symmetrical. At this point you could solder the large rings. It's not essential but it is easier than it looks. If you can, it will prevent it from bending later. Personally, I zap it with my Orion Pulse Welder, so it's really simple for me. 
The last stage is to add the four connecting links which hold all the arms together. Each link goes from one section to the next on the outside of the large ring. The first is going to go here, connecting to the left arm. So through and close. Once again I've just painted it red so you can see and hopefully that's clear where that sits there. So it connects the top of the legs to the left arm. So hopefully you can see that there. Same on the other side, connecting the legs to the arm, through and close. There, once again, arm to the head, through and close. Now the last will be tight as this what creates the stiffness and the tension. If you find that you can't get it through at all, then just check those central rings again as you've probably got something wrong previously. But once the fourth link is in place, the cross should be rigid and keep its shape. You can leave it there if you want, but I'm just going to show you how to add that bail. At the top here, just remove one of those three links, carefully. Just reattach it back in the middle, but only through the end link and close. See that? And double it up by adding another link in the centre. And there you have a nice matching bail. Quick spin in the tumbler and you're good to go. A really lovely gift. The full Persian 6 in 1 cross. I've been Dave Wilson. Thanks for watching and I'll see you real soon on the next video. Bye for now.